hello good people of the internet. Today I will answer some questions that I asked on my post on Instagram. There should be like an intro there, like a um, jingle, <laughs> but I don't have that. Okay, first question. Hi Lenka, can you explain how to do headstand for not flexible hamstrings or not so strong core? So this is already a yoga related question. I was hoping to do those a little bit later. So if you don't have hamstrings that are flexible or strong core, actually I don't believe that you need strong core. You actually need back core strong to lift the legs. And if you can align your hips already, it's you don't have to do much with core. You just have to have the spine already straight and then it's easy. So of course, if you feel like the hamstrings are what is limiting you in lifting into a headstand, then just do things for hamstrings, which is, for example, forward fold, just a simple yoga pose and very basic and uh, you do it almost every time um, during a class. And my favorite, half splits for hamstrings, even lifting the leg towards you. And my biggest tip, I don't know if this is going to fit into the camera, is to elevate your legs or go with one leg at a time. You can use blocks or a chair even to have your feet elevated. And another thing that you can do is to just film yourself and see how the position of your hips looks like and how the position of your spine looks like because uh, you're the best teacher of yourself. So you set up your tripod with your elbows rather close. You put the top of your head down and you press against your palms. And if this is where you got, like this is your maximum, with your hamstrings straight, maybe bend them. And instead of trying to get like into those hamstrings, try to lift the hips up. And then if you need, you will lift your feet on that elevated kind of thing. And then you try to lift your hips. So the hips wants to go really high as if you wanted to really take that roundness of your spine away and then one heel can come to your hips and then the other and you lift easier than if you round and you try to lift like there is <laughs> there is no strength even in my body if my hips stay low you have to bring the heavy part of your body and stack them first before you attempt to go into the inversion and this is why I said that going with one leg first might be easier. So you'll probably not see my legs now, but just bringing one leg all the way up and having only that one, one last, the second leg left to lift it. Press from your arms and I don't even use my core, maybe a little bit of back strength, but the moment I round, it will become really hard and I will collapse down. So hips first, then the rest can come. Okay, second question. How old are you and for how long are you practicing yoga? I mean, I will respond to the question, but I don't want you to compare yourself to me because we have all different paths to yoga, to life, to everything. So even if you are 80 years old, 80, not 18, 80 years old, you might be mentally at 40, I don't know. Depends on what you lived through, uh, your experiences, your upbringing, what country, I don't know. Like, it's like a lot of variables that uh, come into that and make you who you are. And we are all unique, so comparing yourself doesn't make sense. I am 34, I'm practicing yoga since around 27, so it's going to be mm, seven years which sounds crazy. How does your daily routine look like? My normal day when uh, I go to work uh, looks like that I'm awakened by my cat at around six to seven. He wakes me up because he is hungry and he wants food. Then I have to wake up and give him food. And I give the food also to the other cat. I have two cats. And then I go and then I just do like the stuff in bathroom, like cleaning my face, doing my hair. Um, and then I practice for 
even not more than 30 minutes sometimes. Then I create some content, I either shoot a video or I take pictures of something and try to always think about the topic almost just the morning. Uh, I don't even think it before, think, think it through before unless I'm doing a challenge. And I go to work. I work as a scientist, as a researcher at the university and I work in the field of MRI. Uh, my job is mostly sitting at my butt behind the computer. Sometimes we are measuring volunteers or even patients. Then in the evenings when before this whole virus situation I would usually teach almost every evening and then I would go home, edit the video or the photo, think about caption, post it, now the routine is a little bit different because I don't teach, so I stream in the evenings. You can, by the way, join my streams. Just go to the description and there is a link to join my streams. And in the evening, I guess I chill. Uh, well, if I have enough time, I watch some TV shows. I eat, finally. <laughs> and I guess that's it. Okay, next question. What are you doing for lower back pain? I mean, I do a lot of workout for back and abs, but sometimes my lower back aches. I will have back pain uh, often in back pants, and I even know the cause since I already said that I work with MRI. I did some scans of my spine, so I know that on one side, as the nerves are exiting from the spinal column, I will have a little bit less space for the nerve root to go and exit. And this is exactly it's on one side, so I can feel it, especially on that side, mostly. And I know that I went just too deep into the back bend. And you're actually doing great. You are doing abs. So what I would do if I feel a back pain during the practice, I totally always do some core exercises and a lot of twists and really deep twists, trying to release that muscles uh, so they don't clench around uh, the nerve that was actually just aggravated a little bit. And I'm focusing on opening the other parts of my front body in order to try to stay longer and straighter in my low back. So I work a lot on the shoulder mobility, on the upper back, which I still fail to go deeper, but it's natural because there are ribs limiting me and they are there to protect and not squish the organs that are here, they're very important. And then I work on my hip mobility, although it seems like it's not going anywhere right now. I believe that from the long run this is going to help me. And this is an interesting addition to the question. What is the difference between normal soreness and pain and that we should listen to? I would say you always listen to any kind of pain. So even if it's the soreness, I would say soreness is after back, back bends. So if you do a lot of back bends and you feel your low back sore, that actually means that you used your low back too much and I should avoid going that deep into your low back next time that you are going to practice. I know that there are definitely some back bends where you engage your low back muscles, but I would totally focus on engaging from the upper back, mostly in the middle back, and trying to get that back bend into those places and not exert the low back muscles. The low back muscles are there to support you and not to bend your low back even more. Soreness is after exercising, and back pain is always, and it always says something that you should avoid, or maybe not go so deep. Maybe you will discover that this is just your body telling you it never was there, and the next time it will not hurt as much. So I would definitely not avoid back bends all the time if it's a little pain, but if it's a huge pain, and especially if this pain comes in normal life. So if it's not just on your mat, for me it was usually on the mat, but I had a period when I think I hurt it too much and I would feel it when I was lifting stuff and this was really like a big signal from my body to tell me that I did something really wrong. And I did a lot of abs and I tried to take some break from back bends for, I don't know, like a week or maybe two weeks until I could feel my back okay when I was lifting. So after three kids, my lower abs are basically non-existent. This will definitely be my question there. Best ab routine. 
I don't actually do much apps. I do functional apps, so I don't do like 100 cr crunches a day. Although crunches are probably functional, I guess. But most of the cases I just do apps from Navasana to low Navasana. I rarely lift my legs. I do a lot of exercises for compression uh, and for like a forward fold compression and sometimes some exercises for pressing maybe in the future into a handstand. And I think any abs, if you really focus on bringing the belly in towards your low back, are great. You just have to be more aware. I know that some people will have after pregnancy that the middle line will get a little bit stretched in between the two abs from the rectus abdominis. And in this case, it's really important to try to engage from the whole core and not just the middle part of your abs. So trying to engage your core in an effective way, whatever exercise you are doing, I think will might help you. How do you deal with stress and what are some of your favorite foods after a long yoga practice? I deal with stress um, not very good, I would say. Exercise and yoga and mindfulness, but mostly exercise, help with the metabolizing of all the stress hormones. So that's, that's a great way to deal with stress and with mindfulness, it's more to deal with the trauma after you had like a stressful event. So mindfulness allows you to connect your conscious part of the brain with the subconscious where the trauma is residing and if it, does, if it doesn't get solved right away. And this way you can connect these two parts of the brain and it will be hopefully resolved. If not, you have to seek some help, you have to seek therapy. I am reading this book that I should recommend more often. It's called The Body Keeps the Score. The whole book is basically about trauma, but he goes about how the brain works, how it deals with trauma, and it's really interesting. If I would recommend a, one book for everyone to read, it's this one, because you not just get to know yourself and how and why you react in certain ways, in certain situations, but you also get a little bit more empathetic to others if they react in an inappropriate way. The next question is from Natalie Mooks, and she's asking, how did I get to yoga? How my yoga journey started? So you can watch a video here linked in this corner to get to know everything about my yoga journey. And she's asking if she can practice with me somewhere online. Of course, I have classes online. I have here on uh, YouTube, I have some classes on moving. You can find everything about my classes in the link in my description. And if you want to join my live classes, you just have to sign up and I'm streaming here on YouTube. And then she's asking about my cats, so this is my favorite question. I have actually two cats, not just one. So this is Emma. He really hates this right now to sit on me. Uh, he's the cat that is super active. He likes to run on the wheel. He, we got him first, so he's one year older. They're actually brothers, although they look much different. The breed is Devon Rex. He is going to be eight years old now. And Gusto, he is less active, he likes to chill. He's just sleeping here on the sofa and he likes to chill and he likes to eat a lot. He always eats everything that you give him. He even finishes his food often and he's more cuddly, I would say. Emma doesn't like to be cuddled or held. Only sometimes he has some special times in the day, like after I shower, where he's fine with cuddling. Good, I think that's it. If you wanted to ask me something else, you can always ask in the comments. My, I might reply or I might do another Q&A if this interests you. And that's it from me today. Have a nice day. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this video, if you like content from me. It really helps me also if you like the video. Thank you so much. See you.